Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I wanted to introduce you to another technique regarding panning and your stereo image. And this technique is panning automation. So panning automation can be used to add excitement to a mix, and really help things to be noticed in the mix. Because, you know, we have an instinct to notice movement, whether that movement is perceived visually or audibly. So this panning automation can occur quickly or more slowly and in many different ways. It's completely up to you to decide if and how you'll utilize panning automation in your mixes. And this technique isn't strictly limited to mixing. You know, it could simply be an artistic choice in your song to produce some kind of compositional effect. So I have a couple different examples of panning automation in my track, which is HRT. It's an old Hardstyle track of mine, and I'll just play it so you can hear it. So you can hear right away that this synth sound has a kind of LFO on the panning. You know, it fluctuates between playing on the left speaker and playing on the right. And I did this just by using a panning envelope that repeats on the oscillator that I used. So you can see it pans pretty far to the right and then it goes pretty far to the left instantly. So, you know, this just adds some excitement to that sound, compared to this. And then I also use panning automation on another sound in this track, which you'll hear once the beat drops. And so you can hear that it is this screech sound here, which does that. And if you look at how I did it, I actually did it using slide notes in the piano roll. And you can see that here under mod X. You can see I start down here, and then the slide notes slide it up to this value. And if you look at what is routed through the mod X on this synthesizer, it is the panning of the operator 1, as well as the volume and the volume of operator 2. So the volume and the volume of operator 2 are more about the sound design. They make it change from that you know nice cleaner screech sound to a more raw sound as it goes along. But the key point in this video is just the panning. And you can hear that it just pans from one side of the stereo field to the other. And then when the other note plays, it pans back the opposite way. So this kind of panning automation on those two synths just helps add a little bit of excitement and also can help things to stand out in the mix. Because if you listen to, you know, later parts of this track, the mix gets pretty full of different sounds going on, and having that panning really helps these sounds to stand out. So if you listened closely, you can probably notice that a large part of the reason you notice those sounds in the mix is because of that panning automation. You know, there's just so much going on that that automation really helps the sounds to stand out. So these are a couple examples of that panning automation, and another great example is the 
808 snare rolls you will get in trap music. You know, the snare rolls kind of pan all over the place and they pitch all over the place, and that just adds excitement to the sound and can help those snare rolls cut through the mix. Now, I have read before that some people find too much of this technique to be cheesy or immature sounding. Um, so, you know, be careful not to overdo it, and it's really up to you. If you don't think it's cheesy, that's fine. You know, this technique is used a lot in hardstyle music, so obviously it is very cheesy, <laughs> but um, but uh, I I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, just don't do too much of it because it can be kind of annoying. You know, if you imagine that this synth was the main lead and kind of played the whole time, that could get pretty obnoxious if it were going on for too long. But the way it is now only playing occasionally sounds fine to me. So, you know, panning automation can be a great way to help sounds cut through the mix to add some excitement to your mix, and you do just want to be a little bit careful not to overdo it or anything. 